Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm doing a video today. I'm gonna to weld this rail up. Um, all the straps are all fabricated. They are all tacked to the job. The rails are all clamped flat to the bench. I've got these bars in here to stop the internal corners when I weld them from shrinking and changing the shape of the rail. So that's why they're there. Uh, first step is going to be TIG welding uh, stitch passes along this whole bottom side, like so, all the way around there. And then I'm going to flip the rail and do exactly the same on the other side to counter the heat, because when I weld this, it's gonna to wanna to pull up. And then I'm gonna flip it, clamp it down flat. And then when I weld it, the heat's gonna shrink again um, in the opposite direction and keep it flat. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. I'm not gonna time lapse it, because that shit's boring. Um, I'm just gonna do the task, explain, do the task, explain, do the task, explain, because that's how my attentive sort of brain works. So hopefully you guys will learn something a bit more without having to sit through boring shit. Use an Everlast welder. Uh, it's a 280 amp three phase uh, with a pedal. Uh, using a swivel uh, with a fury cup. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, 2.4 tungsten with 1.6 filler, filler rod. Um, and yeah, gloves and helmet and shit. Normal stuff that you weld with. So that's what we've got going on. We'll touch base very shortly when this first one's stitched together. Bottom strap is now stitched together. As you can see, I sanded the face down uh, before I flipped it. So it remained flat just with a sanding pad. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do that to this side because it's been welded to make sure this surface is flat because that's gonna get upside downed onto the table. Oh my God, I'm speaking like a champion today. And the reason I'm gonna flip it over because I'm gonna weld the upper strap on the opposite direction of where I welded last. Uh, so I'm always carrying the heat because heat, weld, shrink, flip, heat, weld, shrink, and then it's gonna keep your rail flat through the whole welding process. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll touch base when the upper strap looks like the bottom strap. All right, upper strap stitched together just like the bottom. As you can see here, we've got a bit of a wobble going on, which is still fine. Because we're in stitch mode still, now I can still chase that out. So now I'm gonna flip it over um, because this is the last side that I welded. And then I'm gonna start from the bottom again and finish off that bottom strap and then do the upper strap again. I'm going to be all fully welded. So I'm going to touch base once this whole thing is fully welded and clamped in its last position. Um, and then we'll talk about the next step after that. Okay, uh, all the straps are fully welded in place now, which is nice. Uh, that wobble got chased out of it, as I said. I'm going to leave this all clamped together while I have some lunch. It's about quarter past two now, so I'm starting to feel a bit funny. Um, and then when I get back, we're gonna go ahead and start MIG welding the corners up um, to build it up to a nice sharp edge. So just like the last time, I'm gonna go through and sand this top edge so it remains flat. Flip it over because this is the last side that I welded. Flip it over and then start stitch building up um, all the way around um, and then sort of sand as I go. So yeah, that'll be the next step. Uh, I'll show you guys is just I'll do I'll do this little section because it's nice and flat so I build it up and I'll sand it to a corner so you guys can see what uh, what's gonna happen but lunchtime all right so this is what we've got this is the corner we're chasing so obviously I've welded that part there and sanded that to the corner this is obviously not welded welded not welded etc so I'm gonna go ahead now that that's all done all the way through as you can see um, exactly the same way we did the TIG um, so we're trying to still manage the heat best we can um, especially having it clamped down all the time so now I'm going to go ahead and flip it and then I'm going to do that on the bottom side all the way through and then flip it again do the top side flip it again do the top side then if I flip it back and finish all these little bits off so when you see this next, everything's gonna have that corner on it. And then we can start uh, removing braces and start chasing some deep scratches out and 
making it all look super nice. All right, so I finished welding and sanding the corner into the rail. Uh, little bits and pieces are going to fill up, but I'm going to do that after I or during welding of these internal gussets. Obviously, the bracing's gone. Uh, I took the bracing out to make it easier for me to sand all the edges up. Um, all the flat edges and outside edges is sanded with a um, sanding pad. And then when I got to these corners, I used a flat disc because if you were to use this in that, it was just going to dig into the corners and it wouldn't work, wouldn't look very nice. You spend a lot more time chasing that out. So I always use flat disc just to get into these inside corners a bit easy. So that's how I went about doing that. Um, after you see this in the next section, everything is going to be all bare metal. So I'm going to use a strip disc uh, to get rid of all the remainder of the scale everywhere. Uh, obviously all the unnecessary holes are going to be welded up like your internal gussets. Uh, these little bits and pieces are all going to be finished off. Um, and then I'll be ready to take the next step of chasing all these deep scratches out. All right, so it's all strip disked, fully welded, the lot. I put it on a bit of MDF so it doesn't move around anymore because I'm now focusing on taking scratches out and putting them back in. So to do that, I'm going to use a 80 grit on sanding pad to take care of all four faces. When I get to these inside corners, I'm going to use a flap disc um, just to stop the digging in of the sanding pad on those corners because that's what happens. So next time you're going to see it, it's going to be all 80 gridded, um, all four faces. And I'm also going to start the corner radius on this as well so I don't cut my finger like I almost did then and I'm just going to use a flap disc on that just one even run nice and simple keep it clean and then we can move on to the next step all right 80 grids done I've got the radius on it as well and it all looks really uniform it's really nice now this is like the exciting part though yes this is finally what it's supposed to look like <laughs> So now that this is 80 gridded all nice and uniform everywhere, I'm going to get my orbital sander out and I'm going to go through a 40 grit. Um, and then I'm going to show you guys what it looks like after the 40 grit. And then I'm then going to do an 80 grit and show you what it looks like there. Then after the 80 grit's done, then we'll do a uh, scotch pipe pass and that will be the completed job. As you can see, 40 grit done. I uh, hit the orbital on the edge as well. Um, let's give it nice that like, crispness. As you can see, looks pretty nice. Very exciting when it sort of starts getting into these stages. It's very rewarding. Uh, so next time I'm gonna put the 80 grit on it and do exactly the same. And then we'll jump over to the Scotch Bright and then we'll be done. All right, 80 grids all done now. Uh, I hope you guys can kind of see the difference um, that's sort of making. Um, same thing as before, I hit the radius. Now I'm going to use a scotch bright and just get rid of that grain, uh, just hand sand, and just cleans it up real nice. I'm me personally, I'm not a fan of the orbital marks, so that's why I do this. Um, and then I just put like a light coat of oil on it and um, she's done. All right guys, this rail is done. Radius is nice, it's all clean, it's all straight, it's awesome. So this will conclude the video. Uh, if you guys learned something from this, awesome. I am super stoked. Uh, don't take this stuff for gospel. There's many ways to get exactly the same result. Um, this is just the way that I found doing it works best. So yeah, that's all I got to say on this matter. See you on the next video. YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, all that type of bullshit. And I'll see you next one.